myself sorted. Terrible. Listen, hi, and welcome to Rosemary's Cook Along in her kitchen or kitchen cook along or whatever we like to call it. But it's having fun. That's what we're going to do. So, what am I doing today? Today, I'm going to be doing um, a lovely pilaf with some lovely Jerusalem artichoke that are in season. And also, I've got my spices, lots of lovely allspice, cinnamon, my obviously my bay leaves, rice. I've got my I've got my um, lovely almonds, my almonds. If you couldn't get and you couldn't get all these whole almonds, but just you could have you you could use slivered almonds. It doesn't really matter. And they're going to be done in paprika for, for garnish. I put in little tomatoes for garnish as well. I'm going to cut those up into quarters at the end. And then you've got the lovely cauliflower that we're doing with our chamula paste. Or those who had to buy it, you'll be putting your chamula paste in. Uh, but we made it on Wednesday, and those who couldn't make it, um, it is up there to be able to make it, and it's delicious. The reason why I don't use harissa is because harissa is more spicy and chili-ish, and this has got chili cayenne, but it's more done with garlic, um, a shallot, or onion, whatever you want to do, ginger. So it's quite pecony, it's different, North African. And there's a, they have two different types, for those who don't know. They have a green chamula and they also have a red chamula. This is, as you see, the red chamula. Paprika, lots and lots of paprika is in there to make it red. And obviously, if you're doing the green one, it's just done with loads of um, herbs, parsley, coriander. So you end up with just a green chamula. So, but I think it's lovely to have it red. Now, so the other thing I'm going to push my chair out of the way, actually. Oh, so if you're ready, now we're going to also do for those, for those who want chicken breasts with it, I've got three little chicken breasts. Well, they're huge, actually. I've got one with skin, one without skin, and I've got a supreme here with the bone. Now I'll just show you how to do that, but that's later when everything's in the oven. Now, the first thing you need to do is put that oven on, 180. So off you go. If you put that oven on now, I'll wait and I will then start doing the onions. That's fine. I won't start yet. I'll wait a few minutes. We've got plenty of time. So put your put your onion. I want actually what would be nice, rather than just sitting here, I'm just I want everybody. How many people I wondered made the chamula paste? Hope quite a lot of you, because it is utterly delicious. Now, so those who oh it's just lovely. The smell is even better from the other day because it's developed in the fridge and things that keeps for so long that'll keep for ages and it'll go with so many different things it's just a softer it's a little bit softer than taking harissa or anything like that it gives it just more flavor that's all you can do a little bit more with it i think um so um you can you can sort of tone it up with different flavors great with lamb by the way great with lamb so basmati rice obviously for the pilaf now the difference between a pilaf and a risotto or just any rice is a pilaf is cooked in the oven that is the only difference okay that's really important to know so it's put do the vegetables Pop it in the oven and let it do its own thing for 25 minutes. In between time, we'll then be doing the cauliflower, okay? So, are you all ready to begin? Because I think we should begin. So, the first thing I've got to do is get that peel up, as I said, in the oven. So, the other thing I didn't mention was the frozen raw beans. That is not a season, but they're British. They are British. I've skinned them. Now, if you haven't skinned yours, you don't have to, but I... I like it when they've got that bright green. You don't cook these. You're just literally putting them in at the last minute. So I will put that over here because I don't need those. Um, it's just to, you can understand, look, you, it's my color sense. I'm just sort of, you know, there, there, putting it all together. Tomato. So you can see what I gave. Now the oven has just told me it is ready, which is good. So, because I put it in just before we came on. So let's start with the onion. Now, those who are new, who are just joining us today, uh, people know how I do things. I always cut each stage first. I don't do one and then do another. I cut each stage. Now, I then re remove the skin. There we are. That's it. Put it there. Remove it. Off we go. 
there we are put it together so easy so much easier than trying to pull it off when it's a whole one right so actually i'm going to do that because it's probably it's even easier doing that so you take this that actually normally come off in one there you go all in one so uh there we go take that off and it loosens it off so you always keep the root on too always keep that root on because that will stop you from crying and it'll make it easier to cut those slices so you don't you you can get more out of it so what i'm going to do rather than dice it actually i'm going to slice it so i'm going to do that okay nicely sliced when it's a pilaf, I mean, you can dice or slice. I think I probably say slice a dice in the recipe. I'm not sure. I can't remember now because <laughs> I do them so long in advance. Now, pop this in there here, but it doesn't matter what you do. Slice or dice. There we go. So I'm literally just sewing. You can see why. You can see why now I do everything at it's stages one by one because it's all done together you don't have to keep doing it. it's much quicker too and also it's neater too which is quite important stay neat well i'm i'm not particularly that neat i have to say to you right a bit naughty right okay so there you go so we got this perfect hope you're following me now those again who've just joined us, please tell me if I'm going too fast because that's such a good thing to do. Just tell me too fast, Rosemary, slow down. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of rapeseed oil, which I've got from the local. This is from Lexford State, which is lovely. We do such great rapeseed oil. I'm also going to put which is not properly the recipe, but it doesn't matter. I always have a bit of butter. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter there because it gives it a little bit of richness, a bit of flavor, but it doesn't matter again. You're just popping. Now, in we go. Now I'm gonna soften this up. Okay, soften it up so it cooks. Right. Okay, is everything all right? Right. Um, yeah, someone's asking, can you use olive oil? Yes, yes, you can. Now, good question. The thing is about this dish is you can use olive oil, um, obviously, because I'm now peeling the artichokes because um, it's great. I mean, it's a, a Mediterranean type dish, Moroccan, but it's not. I've sort of made it my own. Um, but yes, of course, you can use or, or, um, olive oil. You can use any oil. And, and can, even if onions are a bit rustic, people are. Shouldn't worry. No, no. If anything's rustic, please never worry with rustic. Rustic is good because you know this is this is about real food. I'm doing real food with you. I'm not. Don't want to do any restaurant food as such. But also, I want you to really understand. I don't dumb down. What is important? I'm not. I'll say the word patronizing you because that would be ridiculous I, I, i'm taking you through the best stages the real stages without thinking you 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 don't know what you're doing because you know what you're doing you know exactly what you're doing so i basically make sure that you know if i'm doing something i do it restaurant style now but the finish and everything else is rustic it doesn't matter there we go well so we're going to pop this we're just going to do this everything else i'm trying to get think about when you cook it's all about developing the flavors okay now what I'm going to do here I'm going to cut these into dice actually because um, now they're very strong artichokes very very strong there we go are, the, are these plump artichokes from the farm shop yes they are these are all from my farm shop eggs to apples I got these from and it was wonderful so you know, and I hope they're doing it themselves as well. Now, do you see how? Here we are. Have you got, uh, have you got how to chop vegetables on your YouTube channel? I certainly have. If you want to learn how to chop vegetables, go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm not very good at advertising myself like this. I know. Well, yes, I have. Obviously, that person's been watching them. They are good, I have to tell you, because, you know, the thing, I'm going to put these in now. The thing about the artichokes go in 
the artichokes are quite strong so that's why as i said earlier now we we'll keep, keep going with this keep going i'm not going to do two things at once here right here here we have cinnamon stick okay we've got my bay leaves now do you remember those who know me has already used bay leaves what do i do i screw them up now the reason for screwing them up is because then you get the flavor when you smell that flavor it's absolutely to die for i love it i'm going to put those in now that flavor is absolutely delicious there we go i'm just doing that so we don't need to worry if they haven't got an artichoke no if they haven't got an artichoke don't worry it doesn't matter if you've got a tin of chestnuts shove some chestnuts in there they're a really earthy flavor that would work so sometimes oh look i'll show you sometimes I have, I have left over actually from Christmas, and I use and I will use them. Here we are, a jar of chestnuts. I will use these sometime. But if you've got a jar, put that. But otherwise, you know what? Don't put anything in. I love this drawer. If you saw this drawer, you wouldn't believe it. It's so messy. Right. Okay. So we're just doing this. As I said, I am not. I'm not going to rush this. Just one step at a time. And that's why you have to ask me questions. Okay. Now, here's the rice. And here's the goodies. Right. I'm doing it. I'm cooking my pilaf in this. Okay. My favorite pan. Oh, this is, this is an heirloom. This is my very, very favorite pan. Now, I'm going to butter it, actually. I'm going to use my fingers, guys. You know, just using it. I know I shouldn't, but I am. Um, you, you better use a bit of greaseproof paper if you want to, but just bung it in. You know, anything goes. Just bung it in. There we go. Ah, it's lovely. I love it. Right, okay, so we'll just do this. Just going to wipe my hands. Right, just going to get the tea towel out. So, there we go. I think that's beginning to look really superb. Really beautiful. Yes. Flavor as well. You see, the thing is, what it is is, what the, the what the actual juice from artichokes do, they give that huge depth of flavor. I don't know whether you know that taste of artichoke, and that's why I chose it, was because I think it gives it. But I think chestnuts, on its own level, give the same sort of texture. So, I mean, give the same sort of flavor, depth of flavor. So, but you don't have to use any. Uh, just a couple of questions. So, cinnamon stick, where did it come from? Now, good question. Cinnamon stick, I order from some, some wholesalers. And I get lots of, this is fresh. I love it. Mm. And someone who's, uh, who's doing the uh, Telling New Year and, and, uh, and on, a, on a healthy diet, can the spray oil... Yes. Is spray oil did the same effect than a glug for, for swimming purposes? Of course, it's fine. Honestly, anything's fine. Anything you ask me like that, it's fine. You know, nothing is set in stone about anything. Nothing, not one thing. This is actually quite a healthy diet thing because it's, although I put butter in. Okay, now I put the butter in, it's probably not so healthy. Right, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that butter away now as I just said that shove it away i'm going to put in some rice now i've got my flavors can you see that please photographs on that now i'm going to put those lovely flavors in the rice in right i'm going to mix it around like this so it really gets into it really right perfect spread it so it's all lovely now i will put i think a squeeze of lemon in that too so it could do with it, I think. So we're going to get a bit of lemon. Um, okay. Just a squeeze of lemon. Because I think it'll be really delicious. It's not on the recipe, but it doesn't matter. Just get a squeeze of lemon. Or even orange juice. Squeeze of fresh orange juice. Fine. Right. Okay, that's fine. Right, I'm now going to pour this. Okay, stock. There we are. Now, what I'm going to do, that's perfect. 
going to pour this. Oh, somebody, can we just have a recap on spices? Yes, we can. I'm just going to pour this in because I don't want to cook it anymore. Are the spices in? Yeah, everything's in. That's it. Right. I, I did that. Right, now, what I've done is, okay, I want to show them. Right, I'm going to bring it to you. No, I'm not. I'm going to stop it now. For a moment. Right in here, I sautéed the onions. I sautéed the um, uh, part, the also the artichokes cubes diced. I'm now going to. Um, I've put in all spice, a tablespoon of all spice, cinnamon. But also, I put in a cinnamon stick. I put in bay leaves, crush them all up to get the oils out, and then I put it. I put it in there, and I popped all that stock in. All right. So now, what's going to happen is, I'm now going to cover it. I'm going to take. This is where you take a little bit of oil or butter, just a little tiny bit of oil, and you put it. Just a tiny, so tiny, not even a. And you put it on its on the paper. Now, what this will do will stop it from sticking. Now, all I'm going to do is put that in there, cover it. Now, the reason I'm covering it is obviously because then it'll it'll do the whole thing without having to stir it or turn it over. It keeps it moist. It keeps the juices in. It keeps everything in. Okay. So what I'm going to now do is I'm now going to pop it in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Right. Now I'm going to, what I'd like you to do before I carry on, I would like you to have thumbs up to getting that in the oven. So please, when you've all got thumbs up, how many people we got on? Question. Yes. Is, uh, is allspice, is allspice the same as mixed spice that you put into the Christmas cake? Yeah, it's sort of thing. Yes, it is. Sort of thing. Yeah. It's got a lot of sort of peppers and, you know, mixture of spice cloves and things like this. It's allspice. And, uh, I mean, uh, a, vet, a, vet, a vet has asked, would you uh, use a, a chicken stock or would you use um, a chicken carcass? Uh, what would you prefer? Okay, if I was to make my own stock, what I would do, I didn't actually make that stock because I didn't have time, but what I would do is get a carcass, roast it in the oven, put some onions, skins on, don't take skins off, garlic, put all that in, and then I would just cook it off. Now, the thing about doing chicken stock, you to do it more than 30 minutes, you're not going to get any more flavour out of it. So what I do is to cook it for about 30 minutes and then take it out, strain it, and then what I do is reduce it. Now, by reducing, what happens is the flavour becomes stronger. Now, the trick is never to put any salt in your stock before the end because you don't know how salty it's going to be in terms of how much flavour you're going to get. You'd be surprised how much you get. And guess what, everybody? I forgot to put the sugar in. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to put it in afterwards. Right. I'm not going to worry about it. Now, so that's the first thing. Here is ready for my garnishes and everything else. Now, but we've got lots of things to do in between. So we're going to now start the cauliflower. All right. Are we ready to start the cauliflower? Oopsie. Are we ready? Thumbs up, please good now we're going to have to this is the good bit the cauliflower now i've left it obviously whole so you can see me do it all right this is quite important i like as you know i've always liked the leaves of a cauliflower so i shall keep those i'll keep those bits what do you do with the leaves i'll just put them in with the cauliflower so now what i'm going to do is do the florets Catch up. That's all right. I'm going to take it slowly. So that is doing your your. Uh, it may because I didn't bring it to the boil, the actual um, stock. 
in the in that there in the tin itself may take a little bit longer but we've got loads of time to do it so that's cool um now what i'm going to do is take the root off inside now you know what do i always say with the root eat it so okay it makes the most delicious delicious um salad so what we're going to do is here cut this off cut this off here we are delicious I'm probably going to actually put it in with it. I'm not going to waste that. I'm going to cut that up and just put that in with the florets. Why cut it? Why waste it? It's utterly delicious. Oh, there's, a there's a good question, actually. What? What's the difference between using a machete knife and a small paring knife from, from tip? Okay. Well, I do. A machete knife, that's not a machete knife. A machete knife is about that big. Um, that's called an east waste waste knife. That's called an east west knife. It's a cleaver, it's Chinese. Now the reason that I like to use this is because I like to scoop things up. Got the width, but also the actual blade is very sharp, and it's quite a fine blade as well. I like to do. I like to use that. Now the other thing is that um, I'm you. If you're using a small knife, you're more in control than using big knife. I'm used to using big knives. So I'd say if you're not used to using a big knife, then don't use it. Keep the small knife. So, you know, I think that it's important to um, feel comfortable, you know, just feel comfy. It's as simple as that. There is a, there's a right knife and there is a wrong knife. And I will be showing people how to, how to do the knives, um, how to use knives on my YouTube channel soon. Because everybody's asking how to use that and what knife to, and it's obvious it is because knives are important. They first of all are the tools of our trade, so we have to have good knives, and that's fine. And secondly, okay, it's fine. We have the um, we have the tools of our trade, so they, we have certain knives like filleting knife, boning knife, carving knife. They're all different knives and they're all for different things, and slicing knife. Um, serrated knife. Um, yeah, they all do for different things. Now, so I will be showing you very soon. I'm making a bit of a mess here, aren't I? So I'm thinking of knives, actually. That's <laughs> cool. Right, there we are. That's my thing. So I'm making it pretty substantial, aren't I? Right, I'm now going to put in a little bit of oil. All right. I'm now going to put in Again, a little bit of butter. Now, again, okay. Now, you see how hot that is? It's lovely and hot. I'm now going to put this in. There we go. Oh, you can, you can, you can. I'm going to take it down. Oh, it's going to be lovely. Now, in this, in this, I'm just going to wait a bit before I add a little bit of water to clear up. I want you to clear up. Just leave it. Patience is really important when you're cooking. It is the most important thing, patience. Right, here, I'm also going to put that in. This in. So, as, as you know, I don't waste anything at all. I waste absolutely nothing. Okay, keep going. Nothing I can do at the moment, so I just want to make sure that that's nicely browned. I'm going to turn it up a bit. So it's, I'm surprised, I have to tell you, I'm surprised the alarm hasn't gone off. I really am surprised. <coughs> now, I want to get a little cup of water, okay? Just a little cup. Just a little cup. So I shall take this. Okay. There we are. Go and get a cup of water, just so you've got it by your side. Getting nicely brown. <coughs> yeah. 
you can see that. I want them to see this. I want them to keep, can you keep that on? Good. Now I'm going to put a bit of salt in here. Okay, I'm now going to put a little bit of pepper too. Okay, quite peppery. But it's up to you to have it as peppery as you want, but I quite like it a bit. Now at this point, I'm going to put some delicious chamula paste in here. Absolutely delicious. Right, here we go. I'm going to do one, two, three, four. Oh. Oh, it's so tasty. Sorry, guys. Right, I'm now going to put this into here. Oopsie. Yep, sea salt. Fine sea salt. Now, you must make sure that it's really well covered with the chamula. Really make sure it's covered well, okay? Now, when you've got it really nicely covered, you're going to then take a bit of water, keep stirring actually, keep stirring. So you cook, you're cooking the chamula as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to pour some water. Okay. I just put some in, didn't put a lot, but it's just going to reduce right down now. I'm going to keep it moving for a moment. I want to reduce it. That's lovely and yellow. Do you see how it's gone really yellow? That's the, obviously, that's the turmeric. There's a lot of turmeric in there, as you all know, for those who did it. So let's turn it up high. I want to reduce that liquid down a little bit. There we go. Not much, because I want some liquid still in the bottom. So obviously that will help the sauciness of the actual pilaf as well. Does the salt go in there for the... I put a little bit of salt in earlier. There we are. Now, what's going to happen, I'm going to bring this to the boil. I'm now going to, I'm now going to put this actually, I don't want to, I want to put this onto something because it will stain everything. So I'm going to put it onto my paper there. Right, it's just boiling away. Keep it boiling. Now I'm going to pop this in the oven without a lid. So just keep going. I'm not going to do anything else until it's done. There you go. There isn't a lot of water in there, it's just sub. <coughs> right, I'm now going to put this, take this off. And I'm going to put it into the oven on the bottom shelf, the shelf at the bottom underneath. And I'm just going to leave it, as I said, open. Let's open the door. So we got two things in there. Okay, okay, in we go. Right, that's in. Now let's take a deep breath, shall we? Because we've got we've done quite a lot, just very, very quickly. So let's just bring it down a bit. So I'm going to clear up, give myself a bit of a break for two seconds. Well, I don't really need it. Now, the other thing that's really nice with this pilaf is the preserved lemon. So anybody who makes their own preserved lemons or just you can buy them preserved, it is quite frankly delicious with it. Um, so you can do that. Now, okay, so here goes. I would like to just... Turn this right down low. Okay, let's talk about chicken breasts for the moment. So, chicken breast. Now, I like to cook my chicken breasts on the top here and then finish it in the oven, but I'm going to do it all on the top. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how it's done. I know this is not in the recipe because I didn't give it to you, but I did give you the opportunity to get chicken. So, those who came on, I'm going to put a little bit of butter in. This is just to keep it moist. Or those who are on a dark, just use your oil. Okay. Right. Now, the trick is, is not to have it too high. Do not burn it. It's to have it at just the right 
um, just the right way. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put it in and let it do its own thing. And while it's doing its own thing, I'm going to show you how to do the garnish, the nuts for the, here we are, that's later, the nuts for the garnish of the pilaf with the cauliflower. So we're going to do just do this. How many people have you got watching at the moment? It'd be nice to know. That's not bad. We've got a few people. Right. Okay. So here we go. Okay. I don't think a lot of people are into cauliflower, but I think it's delicious. Right. Okay. So the first thing, how to do this supreme. You take your, your you take your, um, you keep this on, you keep the leg on. That is a supreme. I then go like this. And I go like that. And what I do is I, oopsie, be careful as you do this, please take it slowly. Okay. And I push down. So I expose the bone, the wing bone, because this is what this is. It's a wing bone. And that's what makes it look pretty in a restaurant. So you can affect, you can do it. Then what I do is I turn it upside down, take my knife. Okay, cut that off, okay, take the top, really make it clean, make it clean as possible, there we go, and you've got yourself an exposed bone. Now, I'm going to just, let me just make sure I get that off, right, always takes time this, so yeah, now, in here, did you use um, uh, uh, broccoli rather than cauliflower, or does broccoli go a bit soft? Oh, no, you can use broccoli if you want, but don't cook it quite so long. Yes, you're absolutely right, it does go soft. Now, here I've taken this fillet off. Now, these fillets I keep for stir fries because I always take my fillet off. So, for instance, this has got a fillet on, that's lovely, and this has got a fillet on. So that's for a stir fry, ready, goes, you just add it and add it whenever you get a breast. Now, we're going to take a little bit of the chimula paste. Okay, not much, just a bit. So make it look pretty. Now, it's going to be the finish, it's terribly important on this. So it's gotta be good. So I'm now going to pop this in first. We're now going to do this one. I'm not putting much on. You don't need to do much. There we are. Now, I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to leave this one free. Right, so what I want to do now is take that, leave it on a low heat, please. Leave it on a low heat. Because, hang on, let me just wash my hands. I'm going to put that there. So leave it on a nicely... That's better. So, right, what I'm going to make sure is, what I have to make sure with, it's really, it is turned right down, okay? And what will happen... When you are frying anything, what happens is the noise changes. It actually becomes a sharper tone. And you can tell when it's browned and when it's ready. It's really, really interesting. To me, I'm still hearing it's got a fuzziness about it. It's not sharp enough. And I know that's not going to be ready yet. So it's, a, it's literally something you have to be aware of because that will make your life very much simpler. I'm now looking for, you know, every week, I wish somebody come and clean my drawers out for me. Every week, I want tongs. Every week, I have my, I look at that drawer and I think, oh no. no. Right, I'm now going to take this and I want to turn it over because I've had meat on that. Oh! That's where I've put my, uh, you know, whoa, it doesn't matter. That's where I've actually put my thing on there and I've marked it all over. 
Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of butter or oil. Actually, I'm going to put a really tiny bit. Okay, there we go. Oopsie. Uh, into a small pan, low. Now, this is going to be for the nuts, okay? So, I think that, oh dear. Now, do you notice that I have got, there we are, I'm going to put on low. Right. Now, hang on, let me just, let me just have a little, a little think. Now, I'm going to put some garlic in there too, to get it flavour. Right. Now, what I'm going to do is I can hear, I want to, I don't, I'm not going to say a word for a second. It's still rounded. It's not sharp enough yet. It's still, it's browning it really nicely, but it's still not quite there. It's nearly there, not quite. I'm going to push it down. I've not looked at it yet. There, I look at it. I did look at it. It looks good. Quite. Right. It's nearly there. Now, obviously, I have pepper in it. I have, so it's going to be quite peppery. Come, you know, it's got lovely things over it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add, add a little salt. Here we are. Over the actual breasts themselves, like that. Oopsie. I think I need a little bit more on there. These are really thick breasts. I got them actually from my local butchers and they're huge. Now, okay, there it is. Isn't that perfect? Right, I'm now going to turn this one over. Look at that. Now I'm going to turn this over. Now that has, you can see, that has no red on it, okay? And that's absolutely spot on. Now I'm turning it right down low because I need to cook this and it's going to cook in here on the top. So what I'm going to do, so first of all, before I put a lid on it, I'm going to put the nuts in here. Now, I'm going to put paprika, because what am I actually trying to do here? I'm actually trying to make everything red, really interesting, flavoursome. I want to put lots of things in there. Do it in the pan. Okay. Looks a lovely colour. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put now a little bit of that in, not much. So we're going to put there. So I'm going to put some salt in there. Oop, see? Ooh. Okay. Now I'm now going to put a lid on that. Got to find the lid actually. Ugh. Come and clean my cupboards up. Somebody come and clean my cupboards up. Right, okay. So we're going to put lemon on here too. Uh, Tiff very kindly has offered to come round and uh, sort your drawers out. Oh, does she live near me? <laughs> Tiff, you are so fantastic. Where do you live? Oh, God, I can't bear it. Where do you live? Need to know. Right, that's for the, now, to, just to carry on with the garnish. Okay, carry on with the garnish now. I'm going to do. I'm going to have so you've to. Got a, you've got an interesting question here, actually. Yes. Um, Jay Simpson, TJ Simpson, enjoying themselves immensely. Oh, but, good. Uh, could you could possibly uh, share the recipe? To suggest which dishes and pans we need. Do you know what? I've got a bit uh, black of getting the right ones during lessons. Do you know what? You're so right, and I think it's a huge mistake. So next week, I'm not going to make the same mistake again. Right, I promise you that. Okay, promise. So for this, I mean, the thing is this, I just needed a big pan. I've tried to use, what I've tried to do is use, use the pan that I've used for everything, more or less. This one, which is cool. So I think you just need, I need to think about it. You just need a selection. I'll get all your pans out of this. <laughs> No. Do you know what? For me, the most important pan, what is the one I use most of all, is my stove. I use that all the time, every week. Every week. Okay, just do that. So, hey-ho. Right, now, 
but you're so right. I'm going to be more more thoughtful next time. Right, I'm going to cut these into three. Okay, three. So this, I'm afraid, is going to have to take some time. You've got time to do it while everything is cooking in the oven. So let's just cut these up into three. So uh, we have we have a, just we have a, a young uh, young daughter who's nine is just saying. Can you please slow down? She's just trying to keep... Oh, sweetheart. Yes, of course. Well, what I'm doing now, I'm telling you, I'm just cutting these tomatoes so you can just get on. And if you can't cut them yourself, just use, just halve them, all right? Just halve them. <laughs> right, I think that's done. There we are. All right, can you see that? Okay, perfect. Now... That's cooking away. Look, can you see that? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I'm going to sit down to this because I don't need to actually stand up to it because, you know, what you have to do is sit down to anything you can and then, you know, that's how it is when you get older. Right. Oh, right. There we are. And um, what is your favourite nut? Okay. I think macadamia. Macadamias, I love them. I think it's so nice. Such lovely, full of oil though, that's the only thing. They're quite rich, so you can't actually, funny enough, macadamia would go really well. I was, I've actually given up with three and just doing now into four. <laughs> that's quite funny actually. I've given up. So those, yes, so basically guys, just do it into four. There we go, the whole thing. Oh, I hope you're all enjoying this because I think it's lovely. Good fun. Good fun. Thumbs up. And we obviously, and not a lot of people adore cauliflower, as I do, because we've obviously um, got a few people who haven't come on because of cauliflower. Have we had some extra people come through? No? Okay, there we keep going. There we are. Uh, what about YouTube? I wonder if we've got people on YouTube. Right. So that's perfect. Okay, right. I find it too difficult to sit and chop. It's not really my thing. Right, okay, so here we go. So we've got that. That's ready for the pilaf to go in. Right, now we're just waiting for the chicken. So I'm going to pop these tomatoes now. Um, somebody said, why do I use this knife? Well, this is one of the reasons, so I can pick it up easily. There we go. So... Um, we've got this, here we go, we've got, I'm so embarrassed about the board guys, never mind, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to chop the parsley up, because obviously I need this parsley. So, now, if you want coriander, have coriander, but I've got parsley. So we're going to, I want to make it rough, because you know what, because it is a, a sort of, you were saying, is this, what shall I do, I'm saying, actually, Make it, don't make it just fine, make it rough. Perfect. Right, okay, so here, that's it. Now I'm just going to baste. I'm going to, I need to baste these chickens. So off they go. Now basting is really important. I've got garlic in there. I've got thyme. There we go. So basting is really important. Keep going. And also much tastier as well. It makes it taste well. It's beginning to look really lovely. Okay. So, perfect. Keep going. There we are. Now. Right. So that's going. We're ready for our garnish. We're ready for our thing. I'm going to put that into a little a bowl here. Would you like a glass of wine? Oh, why not? Yes. Let's all have a glass of wine while we wait for the things to be cooked. We're going to put that there. We're going to put a bit more garlic, I think, in here. There we go. And um, here we are. Put this there. Take this off. I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried, you lot, having that out. This is a little bit of a worry because uh, it doesn't look very nice. Now. But forgive me, I won't do that again. So, forgive me, put this here. Take this, I'll need this, I'll need that. There we go. Now, I hope you're all cleared up as well. There we are. 
ready to go. Now, this has been a pretty, an all, a pretty simple dinner. But it's the little nuances that I know I'm looking for. What I'm asking is, I want you to please share, share and like. And please send your photos because we're having another competition. Now, Connor, who won last week, we're waiting for his address to send his book off. So we need to have his address. So mum, if you're watching this, can you make sure you send us the address? Okay, do it on a, if you want, do it on a private email, you know, private thing. But please, so please send your pictures in. And you'll get another prize. Really exciting. I want to see who's going to win. There we go. Now, so I can't really do anything at the moment until I want to just look at the PLAF. I'm going to look at it, okay? So bear with me. Okay. That's coming beautifully. Okay, it's not quite done. Right, how long have we had, by the way? How long have we had? How long have we had, by the way? Uh, 50. Okay, so the pilaf is nearly cooked. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the cauliflower out and I'm going to, in fact, reduce the sauce just a little bit. Yeah. Now, look at that. Um, I'm now going to put in, okay, I'm going to put the almonds in. I'm actually going to pop it on here for the moment. Just put this on here because I want to just reduce. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I want to just reduce the, I must say, even those lovely leaves are there. Everything's there. Really beautiful stuff. Really beautiful. Whoopsie. Okay, now, if they use brown rice, will they need more water and longer cooking? Slightly, them? they will, yes, they will. But that's all right, you can just leave it in when I'm gone, you know, and just you don't need as long as you see what it's meant to taste like. Right, the almonds are on there, guys. I'm just going to pop this now onto the stove just to cook it a little bit more. So can you see that, how it's cooking? In fact, I'm gonna put it on here. Now, is the back better or here? Okay, so I wanna put this on here just to cook it right up. Okay, because what is important is, I want to get this to, it's really thick to put into the pilaf. Now, this, don't know whether you realize how delicious this is. I'm going to put, a little bit of parsley on that okay so that's for my cauliflower we're now going to oh dear i'll put this here ready to put the peel off i'm going to put that there i have to now start adding some of this stuff to the peel off right we'll just do this Right, my pilaf. Right, let's just have a little look at it. Spot on. Look at that. Look at that, how delicious. That's perfect. Perfect pilaf, perfect everything. Now, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to add some of these broad beans that people were laughing at me about. I'm going to add the tomato. Delicious. Gives it flavour. All that liquid has absorbed everything in it. Um, it's absolutely delicious. And I love those little bits of broad beans. It's exactly what I wanted. I'm going to leave that little bit of, um, you know, thing there, bay leaf there, because I think it all adds to the presentation. Now, I'm also going to add... Again, some parsley on here.
Now, I'm also going to add, ah, it's gone now, perfect. I'm also going to add, <clears throat> oopsie, the chamula, produced chamula, and I'm going to add it all over this, just to give it some extra bits and flavors. All right. This is when it's, you can actually, when you make your own chamula, it's so much nicer. Right, okay, so that's that. Right, for the chicken, for those who are having chicken, and I'm gonna put a bit of sugar in there because that's what I was meant to put in earlier. Nearly forgot it again. Okay, a little bit of sugar in there just to give it some sweetness. So, I'm gonna put this here. There we are. There we are. Now I'm going to just do the chicken for those who want chicken with it as well, who, who are not into. Okay. Who are not into um, this, you know, this vegetarian bit. Right. So what we'll do in, we'll put it onto here. I love vegetarian. I'll be very happy with that. Right. Let's take this. Let's now take the spoon, baste it one more time. Baste it one more time. Right, I'm now going to take a plate. I've got this. And take a, a slurp of wine. <laughs> it's lovely. Cheers. Ooh. Mm. I think we deserve that, don't you? Oh, that's nice. Oh, right. This is our supreme. I think that's done. I'm just going to check this one. This is my... Because it's very hot. I'm not... That is so perfect. That is so perfect. I cannot tell you. We're now going to cut our supreme. Oh, see? Oh, oh, I've got that knife left in there. Okay, that's all right. Okay, I'm going to do it with my carving knife. Guys, this is my carving knife. Okay. In fact, skin. Oh, it's lovely. Look at that. Spot on. Look, how delicious is that? A little bit of that. And then we got our one with the skin. Cuts like a dream. How long did it take to cook the chicken? Uh, about 15 minutes. So we've now got again okay right guys you've got your delicious chicken delicious oh sorry do i push it here put it here yes okay right you've got delicious chicken those who want a chicken you've got delicious cauliflower with the sauce you've got delicious pilaf you got a delicious meal. Yummy. I hope you so enjoy it. Now, next week, what I'm doing is I'm doing a gratin of smoked haddock and leek gratin. A lot of leeks in there. A lot of leeks. So what I'm going to do, let me just show you. I'm going to serve it. Okay. I'm going to serve it. You can have any of these individual, little individual ramekins, bowls, that. So I'm not going to do one big one. I'm doing individual ones. Okay. So just to let you know, those who are going to be doing on, this is what we'll be using, this sort of thing. I'll probably go for that, actually. I'll probably go for that. All right. So look, um, but you can use anything. Okay. So that's for next week. Absolutely delicious. 
If you haven't got any of these, please don't worry. Put it into a gratin dish. So it's just I have a little secret. So um, that will be fine. Do not worry. Do not stress. Could, could, what would be a substitute for smoked cabbage? Oh, you can do prawns, although it's not quite the same smokies. Um, you can do, ha actually, you know what? You can use just plain haddock, but it's not the same. Um, smoky, the thing is, this particular dish is made with loads and loads of leeks and some haddock. It's not haddocky as such, although it is, it's not. Um, you can make, if you're doing a fish pie type thing, I will say to you, put more fish in than the sauce. And I will take you through, get yourself some plain haddock or whatever you want, lemon or whatever you can get in season at the moment with the snow. Get what you can and then we'll go through it. Uh, those who've just got that, I'll just take you through it. Make sure you've got the recipe with plenty of leeks. Okay, well, it'll be the same recipe with doing a little less sauce, that's all. Okay. So listen, um, enjoy. And I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you learned something. So I will speak to you soon. And I loved it this evening. Cheers. I'm going to have some um, pilaf now and some, some cauliflower and a little bit of chicken. How great is that? Okay, bye for now. I'll see you next week. Bye.